If you're a renter, you may have noticed that right now it feels harder than ever to find a home. Ruined my entire year, if not my entire life. Bidding wars, damp, mould, personality contests. Like the X Factor. Evictions for no reason and skyrocketing rent. Entirely unfair and completely unmanageable. Basically like the Wild West. So what's going on in the UK right now? And is it really the worst time ever to be a renter? This is, um quite something. This is Ang Harrod. She recently moved into this house in South London. You're washing your hair, the moldy water will just start dropping on your head. I'm 27, I've got a good job, I'm looking for something a bit less uni house. I was going through a breakup and had to get out of the house uh, ASAP. Ang Harrod was back on the market, not just for love, but for a room in a share house. It was like dating. You, you were trying to look your best, but this time was hell was absolute hell. How many places do you think you inquired mm -hmm. about? Got to be close to 100. Like 80% of them went unanswered. If I took five more minutes to write that message, 50 more people would have messaged. So it just wasn't a gamble I could take. Did you ever expect to have this much trouble? I don't think I was expecting the toll it would take to be constantly told no. It's probably the most anxious I've probably ever been. I wasn't sleeping. Uh, I was crying a lot and I don't cry. That's like two days of water. There's just too much moisture in the air. She found a place eventually, but there were compromises. That chair is from the past tenant. And is that mould up there? It's mould, and I think they had a leak, but I largely took it because I had to. Yeah, it was my one and only option. Right now, it's not unusual for renters to feel desperate. I put a call out online asking people what it's currently like to find a home. It is a pretty wild um, time out there right now. Absolutely shocking. It's the worst I've ever seen it. For the millions of people who rent privately in the UK, most will use an online property site to find somewhere to live. I checked for apartment, hoping that something's been added to the last time it hit refresh. We would ring the estate agent and it's gone. And even if you do manage to get a viewing. There were 90 people looking. A belt of people, 30 plus people outside queuing. My viewing has been cancelled. Let's just say you decide you want to live there. We had to go £250 over. The letting agent asked me to pay the full 12 months up front. Finding somewhere to rent is an ordeal, made worse by soaring demand. And as the number of available places shrinks, rent is going up across the UK at the fastest rate on record. Almost three and a half million people in England have had their rent raised in the last year alone by an average of £115 a month. And according to one property site, a single renter spends more than a third of their income on rent. The renters united will never be defeated. Renting is never easy, but something feels different at the moment. Some renters are so stressed by the rental market that they're joining protests outside different estate agents in London and Manchester. Let's go talk to the people with the mattress. I want to find out that, what that's all about. How do people who can't afford their rent anymore sleep? They have to rough sleep. That's yeah. why we have cardboard, mattresses, the kind of stuff that people have to sleep on once they can't afford their rent anymore. Are we giving up? No! Are we giving up? No! Of all the reasons protesters gave for why they're angry about renting right now, one stood out in particular. We've had two rent hikes this year. The landlord says um, he's just keeping up with the, with the general rent increases in the area. To stop greedy landlords, as the protesters here see it, and protect people from the cost of living crisis, they're calling for an emergency rent freeze, like the one recently introduced in Scotland. To wake up one morning and put my rent up by two, three hundred pounds a month, I have nothing that I can do about that. That needs to change. What do you say to those who would argue that, you know, this is just the market, when there's more demand, prices go up? Yeah, well, what do you do when there's a market failure? The market has failed. So they're calling for a rent freeze. But that's just one solution to such a myriad of problems that we've been hearing about. So I can't help but think, where does it actually leave renters? I asked Peter Kemp, who's been researching housing policy for decades. Is it just greedy landlords pushing up prices? It's nothing to do with greediness, but we live in a private enterprise, capitalist economy. The key underlying problem is a chronic undersupply of new build housing in Britain. We've got rising demand. When COVID hit, quite a lot of people left the city centres and now rents are rising when they return. And then there's general household growth. The population is growing. So it's like a perfect storm. Many campaigners are calling for a rent freeze. Is that a solution to these problems? A seductive idea, but actually it's misguided. The supply will go down even further. Existing landlords will get out. 
new landlords won't come in. So you have to find a, a solution that's a bit of a compromise yeah. that enables landlords to make a reasonable profit, but not an excessive one. The National Landlords Association blamed the supply and demand issues on government tax policy. The government has repeatedly promised to make private renting fairer and says it will introduce a renter's reform bill in this parliament. But that could take years. So what does it mean for people who need a home right now? I was not expecting to be in this position at the age of 34. Earlier this year, Jess left her job and her life in Cambridge, ready for a new chapter studying a master's degree in Manchester. It was meant to be an exciting new step. She was looking for a place with two of her best friends. We started looking for houses to rent. They were just finding it nigh on impossible. Where did that leave you? Well, it left me here. I'm living at my dad's house in Wolverhampton. Never thought that I'd have to live here again. It was a bit of a um, surprise, wasn't it? Because I, uh, I thought she'd be coming for a bit. And it was meant to be two weeks and it's turned into three months. Yeah. You just feel like, this is wrong, I shouldn't be here. I'm an adult now. Like a lot of people, Jess has turned to house share websites too. But the whole experience has left her exhausted. A furnished room in a house, £2,617 per month. That is insane. What about the messages you've sent out? Absolutely no replies at all. Nothing. I almost made my peace with the fact that I could never buy a house. But now you can't even move to a new town. That makes me feel so trapped, that's so scary. I just feel like I'm not making the most of life. Renters can keep hoping for government action or that the market cools down. But until then, they'll have to deal with this perfect storm in renting and maybe settle for poor conditions, gruelling house hunts or sticking it out at home with mum and dad.